Yes, welcome guys to another Gorilla Wear YouTube exclusive interview. First of all, I want to thank all the viewers for tuning in. Uh, thanks to you guys who have been able to make this a pretty successful series. So we try to push some more content towards you guys. And today we have a special guest and it's the one and only bodybuilding guru, Dennis James. Well, uh, you know, we always like to give back to our community. So this will not be different than the uh, previous uh, your life uh, interview. So what we're going to be giving away, we're going to be giving away a signed Dennis James, Gorilla Wear Athlete T-shirt. Well, I'm wearing one right now. It's the fit is perfect. The color is great. So make sure uh, when you write your question, you also write your size and your country behind your question. So make sure you write your size and your country behind your question every time you uh, 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 write a question. And the best question will be selected. And he or she is going to win a signed Gorilla Wear Dennis James Athlete T-shirt. So uh, let's start it off. Well, Dennis James. Thank you very much for tuning in. We appreciate you for being here. You've been an athlete for us for a very, very, very long time. And uh, yes, coronavirus at this moment. So how have you been holding up? Um, you know what? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I adjusted very well. Like, you know, at the end of the day, you, we didn't have a lot of options. So we had to go with whatever the uh, CDC or the, uh, uh, or the government here required from us. So I'm actually doing pretty well. Because when I'm home, that's, that's the kind of thing I do. I stay home. I'd say oh, if I, as long as I can go to the supermarket and get the groceries that I need, I'm fine. I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty cool. Yeah, we can see, man. You're looking swole over there, man. So, uh, I, I think... hey, I, listen, I took advantage <laughs> of not traveling and literally being at the same place for three months. That never happened in the last, i say, eight years. So wow. I could literally just focus on just doing nothing all day just you know basically training eating watching tv you know and 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 and, and that's it. And, it and it and it did very well for my body so i'm pretty happy yeah true i can see it man so it should be corona all the time <laughs> no man well i just had a quick uh uh a question well not, not me cody because what we always try to do is the previous person who did an interview always has to ask a new person who's coming up a question so uh cody garbrand had a question for you and uh, we're going to roll that clip very soon. Dennis, I'd love to ask you during this pandemic and this you know, COVID-19 that's going on, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay working out? You know, how do you, you know, go to the gym you know, and just your, your regimen? I want to know what your regimen is to you know, stay, like we say, dedicated. Well, nice. um, that's, like I said, you have to make adjustments. And for me, in order to stay motivated, going through this pandemic, you know, you have, you cannot lose focus of your goals. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we're all in this together. We'll have to make adjustments and we still have to focus on what the plan is going, you know, for the future. So for me, I was doing everything possible to stay in shape, to not think about the pandemic too much. Out in the beginning, I was doing a lot of push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Unfort un I mean, unfortunately, I have all the cardio equipment in my house. It doesn't matter. I have a Stairmaster, a toilet mill, I have an elliptical, and I have a bike. So I was doing cardio every day just to make sure I don't get fat from hanging around, sitting on the couch, and not really moving too much, you know? Yeah, true. But like I said, in order for me to stay motivated, I've got to keep my eyes on the price, and I have to focus on the goals, and there's no pandemic on this planet. Hopefully, there's no that can mm -hmm. take me away from my goal. And Super what is your and what is your goal? Let me put it this way: at this moment, my goal is always to practice what I preach. You know what I mean? You know, I'm a coach. Yeah. I, I try to motivate people to get better, and and it's easier. And and what also my goal is to show people that age doesn't mean you have to go you have to look like uh, you know i'm 54 years old and i think uh, my goal was always to show people that you can be in shape or you can get in shape at any age it doesn't matter how old you are that's a good that's a very good goal i think that's motivating to a lot of people as well well we yeah. have a first question that question is from mohammed 
And uh, he says, uh, how much water do bodybuilders drink during the uh, day on, on season? I think he means during on season and off season. How much water does an uh, average bodybuilder drink? Or at least maybe for you, it's uh, applicable to you. How much water did you drink? Okay. Well, as a competitive bodybuilder, I used to drink anywhere from a gallon and a half to two gallons a day. Every day. That was just a must, especially at the time I was living in Thailand where it was very, very humid and you needed to drink water in order to stay hydrated. Same here in Arizona. I'm not a competitive bodybuilder no more, but I still practice what I preach and yeah. therefore I still train and I still stay hydrated, which I think is the most important thing uh, um, to, to do next to food. And that's why I drink at least a gallon. And when you add all the other stuff like coffee and stuff that I drink in between, like I would say a gallon to a gallon and a half daily. Very good. Yeah, because I think staying hydrated is very important. Otherwise, you feel nauseous or you can't even work out. So uh, it's always something that exactly. needs to be a lot of, on point. A lot, of people, a lot of people wonder how come they're in the gym and they had a good meal or they had a, a, a few solid meals and they just can't get no pump. And it's 99% it's because they didn't have enough water because the carbs True. can't go into your system without fluid. You know, one yeah. gram of carbs needs four grams of water. So in order to transport the carbs to your system, you need to drink. True. Well, uh, you've always been that, at least now you made the transition from being a bodybuilder to becoming a bodybuilding guru. And it's, it, it, just for me, very interesting, like when did you uh, make that switch? Or at least when did people start recognizing you for, hey, this is a guy who knows how to coach person, people instead of just, oh, this is a bodybuilder who's prepping himself or uh, something else? You know what? I was helping guys long before I retired. I was helping people out with their diets. I was writing out programs. I was doing that for a long time before I even retired. I was just able to solely focus on helping others after my retirement, which made it a lot easier to... Uh, to take on more clients and, and, and literally do it full time. So I've been doing this for a long time, yes. Okay, well, we have another question and it's about, uh, it's from uh, Pamela. Uh, we all know uh, the Black Lives Matter is a big thing at this moment. So she said, uh, what are your thoughts on Black Lives Matters and what do you tell people on your platform for peace? I think that we just well, saw a different question just now, but that's not a question you should focus on, but a question I just asked about the Black Lives uh, Matters. Well, oh, all lives matter. Number one. Yeah. Black lives matter just as anybody else. All lives matter. It doesn't matter black or white. I'm yeah. mixed myself, so I'm right down the middle. You know what I'm saying? I can yeah. speak for black people. I can speak for white people. All I'm trying to say is, for me, this is all... I mean, now right after the pandemic, this is all a little bit just makes it the whole the whole pandemic a little worse with what's yeah. going on right now. Do I believe? Yes, things need to change, especially when it comes to the police and the way the police conduct their stops and treat people. Yes, yeah. I do, but um, but I don't think we uh will we'll have to. Uh, it's hard to say, man. It's hard to say because either way, you're gonna you're gonna say something. Somebody's gonna be hurt. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And, and, what I'm saying is, yes, um, this, when we just talk about the cases that, that just happened, the case of Minneapolis, murder, yes, 100%. Then we had this case just now in Atlanta where the cop shot the guy. If it wasn't for him shooting him in the back, I would have said, okay, he felt threatened. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or if he would have shot him while they were hustling or tussling on the ground. And, you know, he said, oh, he was going for my gun. But to shoot someone in the back, mm, <laughs> that, it can be a threat when you shoot him in the back, you know? Yes, but you know what I mean? So, and, and, the, and the problem is with what's going on right now, everybody is f focusing on every mistake the cops are doing right now. So it's got to be really, really hard to be a cop right now because you think the world is watching you and, they, you know, yeah, and it's going to be hard for them to make decisions that they would usually wouldn't have a problem with. Now they have to think twice if they should uh, uh, um, enforce the law you know, when it's certain people. So you have to, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be very, very strange in the future to see what's going to happen. True. But at the end, all lives matter. It doesn't matter black, white, yellow, red. It don't matter what, what, what race you are or what yeah. religion. It doesn't matter. I, I think maybe it also has to do a little bit about uh, the stressful situation we're already in because it's 2020. Uh, we I first started out with the pandemic. the pandemic. Yeah. 
The yeah. pandemic made, made it even worse. I think these guys yeah. were sitting at home for three months, like yeah. locked into the house. Now yeah, all true. of a sudden, you get a chance to go out and go fucking go crazy. And, you know, <laughs> and it's probably easier for somebody to go crazy being locked up for three months. You know what I mean? So true. I think, I think so too. And, and, the stress, and, the, and the stress, and I also read some articles about a lot of black people losing their jobs. They were one uh, due to the pandemic. And I think that also builds to a certain uh, amount of uh, stress. And uh, you know, you yeah, know, when people get stressed, they have, to, they have to, re they have to react. You know, so um, yeah, but not 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 only black people lost their job. Everybody, I mean, white, everybody lost their. There's over 30 million people in America lost their jobs. So they're yeah, not true. only black. You know what I mean? You know, it's, yeah. it it affected everyone. I mean, we're all in the same boat. Yeah, true. That's the way I see it. We all in the same boat. So we should, if we don't stick together, who's going to stick together? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we're the United States of America. That's what they're saying. I'm, I'm talking about America right now. We could talk about mm -hmm. the Europe. European countries where there's the same issues. Yeah, but I'm talking about the United States. It says the United States. So soon, sooner or later, we need to come, you know, come together and unite. You know what I mean? And, 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 un yeah. and unless that's going to happen, I think it's going to be a couple of rough months or years ahead of us. Yeah, true. I think so, too. Well, uh, let's get back to the bodybuilding topic that I just asked uh, previously before we got the online question. Um, I just want to wonder, like, uh, I know being a bodybuilder and at least doing on the high level that you did previously in the past, would you say there's a high level of discipline necessary to do that? And where did your discipline come from? C can you repeat that? This the end of the question one more time? I said, where did your discipline come from? Because there's a lot of, uh, there's a high level of discipline you need for the sport. So where did your discipline yes. come from? Well, it's obviously you got to have a high level of discipline. I mean, and, and this, I mean, every single one of the bodybuilders in the top right today. You can't get there unless you are 100% dedicated. You can get there, you can get to a certain point being like 50% dedicated and, and have great genetics. But to be at the top and to be, and, to be, and stay there, you have to be 100% disciplined. And my discipline, my motivation came from having a goal. Like I always say, you set yourself a goal and you don't stop until you get there. Or you don't stop until you find out you will never get there. But you don't <laughs> know unless you try. So this is what I tell people, you know. I mean, I, I, I was watching videos. I mean, I lived in Thailand, like thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away from the center of the sport. Yeah. Where I didn't have anybody to, to look up to or anyone where I can steal some moves from, or, you know, there was no bigger guys over there. So I literally lived off of VHS videos, training videos from other guys that I admired. And I watched their videos before the gym, you know, and that's how I got my motivation. But at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is whatever goal you set yourself and you don't stop until you get there. Uh, who, you said you were watching some uh, videos. Who were uh, the bodybuilders you were looking at at that time? Oh, I put my I put my my guys together. I had different guys for different body parts. Okay. I had Ronnie Coleman for back. I had I remember Marcus Rule, Lee Haney for chest. I had um, uh, Kevin Lerone for shoulders. You know what I mean? So I picked the different guys with different great body parts that I yeah. admired, and then I watched their videos. And sometimes some videos a little more about Dorian Yates' videos, Blood and Guts, that was <laughs> had me yeah. all fired up. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that, that's all I had back in Thailand. There was nothing else yeah. for me to get motivated on. You know what I mean? It's not like I was able to train at Gold's Gym where you see all the other guys training and you see them in a tank top so you get motivated by watching them. No, I had to watch, I had to watch the videos. And uh, you also said uh, a little bit about you, uh, your flight, and uh, that just have been the first time that you've been able to stay at home for like three months. Uh, yes. Would you say Would you say you miss your previous lifestyle, or would you say no? Um, uh, I, I enjoy this time off, just working on me and not being busy with the uh, sponsors or stuff like that. I'll, I'll be I'll be perfectly honest. In the yeah, beginning, I was like, "This is so perfect." You know what I mean? This should be going on forever. But yeah. right now, I'm at the point where I miss interacting with the fans. And not only on social media, but in person. I miss doing the workshops. I miss doing the training camps. I miss doing seminars. So I, I miss traveling again. So, you know, I'm, I'm at the point where I said, I'm ready to go. It's about time for, for whoever open up these international flights so we can get going again. Because it is it is different, you know. I was sitting at home, for, you know, I, I don't have a problem being at home because, I, you know, I have a nice little house. So, 
it's comfortable so I can sit at the pool and chill all day. But, you know, it's time, I'm t it's time to go out there and, and, and start making money again. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Well, uh, I think everyone knows the tattoos and uh, you were talking about comp competing in the past. So I know when you were competing, you didn't have any. And then later when you retired, you did. So why did you decide to uh, put on the tattoos? I was always a fan of tattoos. Even when I was young, I was always a fan of, well, when I was really young, tattoos back then, if you see someone with tattoos, that person, then you instantly said, oh, he, he was in prison. Because yeah, back then criminal. tattoos weren't normal, you know, mm -hmm. and when I was young, young. So if you had tattoos, you're either a gangster or you had been, you've been in prison. So, but, you know, later on, I was just, you know, I, I always admired tattoos, especially like Polynesian and, and, and tribal, uh, uh, Samoan, Maori stuff. So, and I always told myself, I said, the day you retire, you're going to get tattoos. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, I didn't want to get them before because I, I thought, you know, and in fact, then I think it, that, uh, that, that, that was the case that you could just get marked, not marked mark down, but you hide uh, um um, separation and detail with tattoos when, that you can't see. So, I, you know, I never, never really got tattoos before I retired. But after I yeah. retired, I was like, you know, what? You know, I got to do something to make sure I don't get back on stage because I still feel like I can do it. To this day, I feel like I can still train and try and try to bulk up again and try to get ready. So I said, I'm gonna protect myself and I'm gonna put some tattoos on me to make sure I don't have no stupid ideas. Yeah. <laughs> So you so after, so so why did why did you retire? Was it something like because if you're telling me now you still felt like you could do it, that means I, just because I think I can still do it doesn't mean yeah. I believe I can win. I retired because I knew I was at a point where there's no winning for me. Now it's only going backwards. Okay. I'm not saying I can still do it and look better than I ever did. That's not yeah. what I'm saying. All I'm okay. saying is I would still have even at 54, I would still have enough. Probably I would still able to have enough muscle to compete if I would get back on the Jews and do all the just crazy stuff I have to do. I think to, to compete, I'm not saying I could place, but I know <laughs> that I couldn't, so that's why I wouldn't do it. Okay. Well, yeah, this is up to the younger guys. I'm just an old guy that's just like I said, practice what I preach. I want to show the world that I was doing this lifestyle for over 20 something years. And yeah. Just because you don't compete anymore doesn't, doesn't mean that you have to go looking like shit. And that's also one interesting thing we first we I spoke to you about. When I first saw you, I was like, whoa, this guy's huge. He must be on juice. And you were just like, yeah. no, man. I haven't, <laughs> you said, I haven't touched that, shit, that stuff for a long time. So I was yeah, like, and, and, you, know, you know, I was what? like, and, yeah. And you know what? I don't have to because this is my genetics right now. I just got to be home. I just got to be able to eat four meals, sometimes five meals a day, and I'm going to grow regardless. It doesn't matter if I train or not. But if I get to train too, this is what happens. He stays full. <laughs> well, if we I just get back on, if I, I promise you, if I get back yeah. on, I'll be 300 pounds in less than a month. 300 pounds. Well, how much are you weighing right now? Right now, I would say 240. 240. So you think yeah. in less than a month, you weigh, you, you gain 60 pounds? Well, maybe that's a little exaggerated, but let me put it this way. I could, let me put it this way. I believe, and I could be wrong because I haven't yeah. done it, but I believe that if I would get back on and I would train and eat the way I did, then I would go up to 280 easy. 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 I believe I, I, I could go up to 265, 270 right now with nothing, just eating six, seven meals a day. But you're, but let's be honest here. I think you're also already uh, you passed that stage. Like okay, you know I've, I've done the bodybuilding thing, and uh, you're not um, doing the coaching. Yeah, <laughs> I'm at a stage. I'm at a stage to be honest. I'm trying to trim down. I'm, I started dieting two weeks ago, so now I want to get my weight down. I, I'm my goal is 220, and be and be nice and lean, not shredded, because yeah. you know I'm I'm not going there. I'm still I still like to eat whatever I want here and there. But yeah. I, I'm right now. I'm, I'm, I'm cut, I cut my carbs out to like less than a hundred grams a day. Yeah. For six days a week, and then one day I'll just have a few, a few carbs more. And I just want to see if I can bring my weight down. It's, it's not only because I'm, I'm, you know, I've, I've been the big DJ. I've been 
the 300 pound and walking around looking like I can't get through the door unless I walk sideways. You know, yeah. I've done all that. I've been there. Yeah. So right now I want to see, you know, how low, how, uh, it's not easy for me to get to 220 because <clears throat> my natural weight would be around 230, 240 right now. Because yeah. in my family, everybody's around my weight, even my mom. Okay. So <laughs> we don't have like the 180s and 170s and 200s in our family. We all pretty built. Pretty built. <laughs> well, we have an uh, online question from Robert, and he says, uh, "What are your tips on building a wide and thick back?" Well, there's there's, there's two different. We'll, we'll have to throw these questions in two parts: wide, and then thick. Part one: wide. I always say the wider the grip, the wider the back. Pull-ups, chin-ups. I mean, that stuff with the extra wide grip will help you with the width of your lats. You know yeah. what I mean? Now, thickness. Thickness that comes with different exercises, like a lot of rowing exercises, bend over rows, T-bar rows, barbell rows, dumbbell rows. Those are the things that, that will help you with thickness. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you work for the width and then you work for the thickness. Okay. So uh, it's not something you could say you could combine both in one workout? Well, I'm sure that, you know, everybody's a little different genetically. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure I see people that all they do is lat pull downs and pull ups. And pull-ups yeah. all day, you know what I mean? And, and they, they they also develop some kind of thickness. Yeah. But in order to get that thickness that we're looking for at the top level of, of the pros, you need to do rowing exercises. Okay. Well, uh, you, you've you been co a competitor for a pretty long time. And uh, what would you who would you say was, was the biggest influence or maybe even and, and also the biggest threat when you were really coming up and uh, into the bodybuilding sports? I'm really into competing at that moment. All right. My biggest influence when I started bodybuilding was Lee Haney and Kevin Lerone. Lee Haney, because I loved his physique and I, I admired his the way he was as a person, not only as Mr. Olympia, but the way he conducted himself in, in public. And he was just so down to earth. And that's why I always admired Lee Haney. Kevin Lerone, because I kind of saw myself similar to Kevin. You know, okay. we both light skin, we had the hair, you know, we both had the shoulders. So I, every time I, I, I look at myself, you know what I mean? I'm trying to compare myself with Kevin in the very beginning. Yeah. And I remember, I remember my first NPC show with the uh, the Border States Classic in yeah. and, and San Diego, um, Pacific Beach Highway or Pacific Highway somewhere at school. We did the show, the Border States Classic. And I remember that was the first time I ever stepped on any stage in the United States. And I remember as soon as I got on stage, people calling me Kevin Lerone, you know what I mean? And it basically just confirmed what I was thinking. And I remember when I first met Kevin, the very first time, it was at a photo shoot at the Fullerton Coliseum gym, Miller's gym back then. And then Kevin even told me, he said, yeah, man, I heard a lot about you. I said, people telling me there's somebody just like me. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, those two guys were uh, um, my motivation yeah. starting to start bodybuilding. Now... My competition, I had a lot of competition. All of them were my competition. But the closest ones that, you know, in the very beginning of my career as a pro, there was, of course, Dexter Jackson. There was Chris. There was, uh, uh, um, um, uh, who else was there? There were so many guys. All of them. Jay Cutler, of course. I mean, you name them, they were my competition. Ronnie Coleman. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not like I didn't fear anyone. But yeah. at the end of the day, they were all competition. You know what I mean? I loved every one of the guys, but I was training and I was telling myself every workout, I'm going to beat him. I want to beat him. That's all I wanted to do. You know, it's all I wanted yeah. to do. But it's a subjective sport. So you have to understand and I tell people all the time, you got to be able to not win and still get up, dust yourself off and keep going. And that's the name of the game in this sport. Yeah, that's true. Because, yeah. It's an objective sport, and sometimes uh, not always the person that the crowd feels should win wins. So uh, it, it makes it pretty difficult sometimes. And uh, exactly. you, you said you said you used to be very big. What what are things that you do miss about being big? Nothing, to be honest. I don't miss anything because at the end of the day, I feel everything is feel feel. I feel like it's everything is the same. I still go out and people are like, oh, you're so big, even though. I <laughs> yeah. Even though I think, even though I think like, yeah, I'm like 70 pounds less. What are they talking about? But I'm still way above average, so nothing really changed. I don't miss anything. All I do is I realize how 
unable to move I was at a certain weight that I didn't realize back then because I thought everything was normal. You know what I mean? Now, now I'm in the shot of my ear for, for more than 30 seconds. I would Seriously? have, a, a, I would have a, sh a biceps pump. I would have a shoulder pump. I would have to put the phone here and just lean on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then what are you going to do? You're going to get a, 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 a chest pump. Saying all that. <laughs> oh, bro, there's so many things that you don't realize until you lose the weight of something pounds. Yeah. Just to tie your shoes, to sit in a chair, just to bend down and tie your shoes. I would have like 10 seconds, like, whoop. <laughs> <sighs> I would come up like, <laughs> now I can, I can comfortably go down. I can still yeah. look up. I have a conversation, can still yeah. breathe and still talk. You can, I can wash my feet in the shower. I can bend all the way down to wash my feet. Things that I probably couldn't do. I had to sit down and lift my foot up and do all this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's different, though. It's different. But you know what? I had fun in both times. I had fun being big, and I had fun being semi-big. And I will have fun being 220 or 210. I have no. I'll, I won't have to have a problem. I just hope I don't end up with a big water head when my head looks bigger than the body. Yeah, why, why would you think <laughs> <laughs> so, you <laughs> so you think your hair will look bigger than white? Because you're not gonna lose, big. you're not gonna lose weight on your head, so your head's gonna stay stay swole. Some people, hey, some people do. Some people head look like I don't want to look like my bobblehead doll that's coming out. Right <laughs> oh man, 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 man! I think I think I think you'd probably be fine if you lose just a little bit of weight. And I think it's it's, it's well, what you just said. It's all about being comfortable. So if it's if it's comfortable for you. That's all that matter, matters, you know. Even at the end of the day, some people want to be huge and big, and some people just want to be lean or even shredded. So uh, that's hey, it. If my if my head gets too big, I'll just eat two more meals. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe there's the meals in, in between. In between, who knows? Well, we have a question from uh, Jasper. He says, um, uh, "How is it possible to keep in such good shape? Uh, what's your secret?" There's no secret. It's called consistency. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. I'm not doing this for three years. I've been doing this for almost 30 years now. Yeah. So consistency is the key to everything. The key to success is consistency. The key to health is consistency. The key to just be who you want to be is being consistent. And just you can't just expect to do something for like two, three weeks and you, you want to see change. This doesn't come in, in two, three weeks. You have to be consistently doing the same thing over and over to let your body adjust to different uh, um, um, ways of, you know, it doesn't matter if it's your diet, if it's your, 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 your daily workouts, your everyday lifestyle, you know what I mean? And if you, if you, you know, work towards a goal and you, you're somewhat there, you somewhat like where you are and you want to maintain, that's the easiest way. Just stay consistent, do what you've been doing and just keep rolling. Yeah, I think so too. Because yeah, eventually, even with your body, if you want to get bigger, you have to be consistent. Even if you want to lose weight, you have to be consistent. So it's always oh, like that. Yeah. C can you imagine how many people thought when I retired and when I tell people I'm, I stop everything, you know? And sometimes I don't even train for months. People say, like, oh, yeah, he can, he's going he's to he's gonna fall apart. <laughs> yeah. They say, hey, he's going to fall apart. You'll never see me fall apart. You didn't see me fall apart when I had my shoulder surgery, my biceps tear, all back to back. Then my arm and my 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 my, my wrist, I broke yeah, my wrist. wrist. Yeah. I was out for almost a year and a year and nine months without training. I didn't fall apart. So hmm. there's obviously something you can't listen. You can't train or do something for 27, 8, 28 years and then don't do it for three months and it, and it just disappears. Yeah, true. Yeah, but it depends. It depends. And we have we have seen it with some bodybuilders when they stop and they and they, they stop competing. It's like a year later they're like uh, totally different. It's like who, who's this guy? I don't recognize yeah, but, him or. But, yeah, but Kevin, you know why? You know why that is? That's because that's who they were before. If you're skinny to begin with, and yeah. you built yourself up, yeah. if you stop, you will go back to skinny. Don't you think the your body's going to keep some of the muscle like, okay, uh, we were if skinny? You stay, if you stay consistent, you will you will be more muscular before, uh, as you know when you started. Yeah, but course. your body wants to go back to where your body is used to and comfortable with. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think if you're skinny and you start body, but look like a Dex, Dexter Jackson is for me an example right now. 
Dexter was skinny. And he built himself to the way he is today, which is unfucking believable by being the most consistent bodybuilder that we have today. Yeah. Now, if Dexter retires, he's going to keep training because he doesn't want to go back to skinny. Yeah. So he's going to keep training. He's going to keep training. But it's going to come the time where his body wants to go. He wants to lose body and muscle. Because I know Dexter when he used to take some time off after the Olympia. And I remember when he came to Thailand for my wedding. And he was he was taking time off for like three months. And I was like, you know, he looked like he almost disappeared. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, I know his, that's his natural Genetics. his natural body weight is probably yeah. I don't know maybe 140 150 pounds oh wow that's light so you know I don't think he'll ever go back to that but he will not he, if Dexter would stop training completely which I don't think he will because once you do this for such a long time you will always train like me so he can always look like it, he will probably still look like he is right now, but maybe yeah. 20, 30, 40, 40 pounds less, but he will always look the same until he, until, uh, probably until the day he dies. I don't think he'll ever get back to skinny because he will train. But if he would stop training, because he's not an eater. Dexter is not a guy that would eat. He can probably get away with one, maybe two meals a day for the rest of his life because he doesn't like to eat. So really? that plays, yeah, and, 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 from, and from me knowing that, that is the only thing that if he would stop eating and stop training, he would lose a lot of muscle real fast. Yeah. So we'll see. But if he stays consistent and he keeps training, he doesn't have to use anything. He just has to yeah. stay consistent. Just Sometimes train. I'm, I'm always shocked when I hear some people don't like to eat. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not doing crazy weight, weights. Yeah. I'm just going to the gym. I just chase a pump just to feel good. And that's all I do. Yeah, true. It's just to stimulate the muscle. You don't have to make any additional gains anymore because that time has passed. I don't need another injury. It's not necessary. Why should I be? If I hurt myself, it's not in the gym. I guarantee you that. It's probably trying to wash dishes or some stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or wipe your ass. Remember last time you told me? About <laughs> that's, how I tore, that's how I tore my biceps. I know. I know. You told me. I was like, oh, man, yeah. get out of here. You must be kidding. You said, no, man. I was I, trying to wipe and, my ass and, and I tore you know my what? bicep. <laughs> the, whole world, the whole world thought I was bullshitting. But I'll tell you, yeah. I'm not. I remember when I went to the doctor, you know, I said, what happened? I said, you know, I, <laughs> so I tried to wipe my ass. That's exactly what I said. You know, and she didn't want to put it in the report like this. So she put it in the report. I was reaching back. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. I reached back and I felt the pop. I was like, what was that? Oh. And that was it. I had to get oh surgery. God. Man, man, man. Yeah. I said, look, look at that picture. Well, I remember that I remember that time. I was well, like, the, pic oh. the picture you see it right now is with from me, your wrist. The, with, with my wrist. That yeah, was I after I got out of the sling, just like yeah. a couple of weeks. And then I broke my wrist. The wrist happened. Yeah, you so so. The, do you think that all that all those things happened with the wrist because you were doing heavy lifting or? Uh... No, the thing in the wrist happened in the shower. I slipped. I, I, <laughs> oh I didn't. Did I didn't tell you? I was in the shower. It was some. It was somewhere in Fort. Where was it? Somewhere in Fort, Fort Lauderdale, I think. I was in a hotel, and they had they get, I had an apartment with a nice walking shower. And usually, when you have, you know, they give you towels where you put on the floors, or when you come out, so you don't have to step on the towels with your wet yeah. feet. I forgot to put the towel down, <laughs> so I stepped out, and I and I'm up in the air, thinking <laughs> shoulder, protect the shoulder. So I lean over, and I landed on my hand this way, mm. with my whole body weight, and broke my wrist, my coat, my scaphoid bone. So. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> oh, wow. Ne well, ne I never hurt myself in the gym. Never okay. had an injury from the gym. Okay, good. Well, we have a question again from Jasper. But Jasper, and it's, uh, what are your predictions? Who's going to be the new Mr. Olympia upcoming uh, December? Hmm. Depending on who's, on the, who's in the show. So right now, we don't even have a, a list of qualified competitors. We know who's qualified so far, but from the people that are qualified, we don't know who's competing. We don't know if, if, if Phil is coming back. We don't know if Sean Roden is coming back. So let's say yeah. they're not. Then I believe this will be a, um, another show for Brandon to repeat simply because he's the reigning champ and he uses the motivation from winning last year to be on that stage again and come in even better, which I think he will. 
I think he will, because he doesn't have to work on any body parts, which is a good thing. He has all the body parts. He's going to come in probably even drier than last year. He needs to be a little bit drier in order to, uh, uh, you know, just come out on top again, which I think he could. Don't you think he has to work on his legs? Because there were there were at least I, a lot of feedback online that he uh, has to work on his, uh, bring up his okay. leg to catch up okay. with his upper body. Okay, you all, you, you know, I, I, I give, always give my honest opinion because I can yeah. wish you rush talk. <laughs> Listen, we all know that Brandon Curry doesn't have the biggest legs. Yeah. Which didn't fucking bother, didn't make a difference last year. He still won the Olympia. Yeah. So instead of us breaking down his body and telling him, ah, oh, your legs are too small. Listen, I want Mr. Olympia with small legs. They're not small. They just look not up to par with the upper body. But I'll tell you this. If he brings more separation in the quads, they're yeah. going to look way bigger. And then if he has a better condition and more separation in the quads, and everybody who knows bodybuilding understands what I'm saying right now, his legs look like they're going to be, they, they, they're going to look like there's inches bigger than they were last year, just by having the separation. And that's all he yeah. needs to do. I can knock on, on, on Brandon and say, oh, yeah, he needs bigger legs. But listen, Brandon is not just training for two, three years. So, yeah. and if you don't have them legs the way people want to see them after 20 years, 25 years of working out, yeah. don't expect him coming back with huge legs. That might, that might most likely won't happen. So all he yeah, can do is he, just... He did make a few huge changes, like, uh, compared to, like, Brandon Curry now, compared to, like, Brandon Curry. For example, look at that picture, the Brandon Curry back then, and the Brandon Curry that's with us right now. It's, it's, a, it's a night and day difference, you know? Absolutely. But his whole body changed. But then you see, but just because you get bigger, did, did, didn't fix the imbalance of lower to upper body. So he got bigger overall. His legs got bigger, but so did his upper body. So the imbalance is still there. Yeah, exactly. So, true. so for his legs to catch up with his upper body, so what does he have to do? Yeah, well, you can think of two factors here. He could just stop training upper body and just train the legs, make the legs grow and, and catch up. It doesn't work that way. No, so true. what you can do, well, well, you just try to lose weight on your upper body to match your legs. That's not going to happen either. So at the end of the day, all he has to do is come better than he was last year. That's his only mission. Be better in 2019. And all he has to do in order to be better is be better conditioned. That's it. And he can repeat again. He has a solid, solid threat in William Bonac. Don't get me wrong now. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be William and Brandon going shot for shot like they did at the Arnold. And I'm not saying that Brandon will win because he's Mr. Olympia. Brandon needs to be better than he was last year. Yeah. Because William is, next to Dexter Jackson, the most consistent bodybuilder when it comes to condition. So we don't have to worry about William not being in shape. True. Even after he you know lost his saying? coach, because I remember uh, he was with Neil Hill, even after he lost his coach, because I remember he was with Neil Hill, and then when he stopped winning, listen. everyone was like, oh, Bonac made a big mistake, uh, this and that. But Bonac wait came in the wait, way Bonac wait, always wait comes in. Wait a minute. And I'm not knocking on any coaches right now. Yeah. William Bonac was in shape every time before he had a coach. So he was always in shape. I'm not saying he's just stopped getting in shape since he's with Neil. He was in shape before Neil. Yeah. So he knows how to get in shape. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he just proved everybody, that the, he proved it to everyone just saying, listen, even though he lost his coach, I know a lot of people probably figured, oh, he's going he's gonna to drop off the damn Yeah, true. Uh, That's ball. what a lot of people thought. He got better. He, and even if people say, oh, yeah, oh, I think he was a little bit better that David Neal. He plays us better. So give him all the credit you want. He's going by record. You know, look at He won the Arnold. True. He got second at the Olympia. Well, how, how much can you talk a person down that's been doing as well as William does? More power to him. William, I got your back no fucking matter what. True. Do your thing, right. brother. That's all yeah, I can say. True. Do your thing. That's it. He has to do it. Well, another question we have from Mohamed. It says, what kind of supplements uh, did you take a day? I think maybe he's referring to your bodybuilding days, I think. What kind of supplement do you think what? 
Yeah, did you take a day? It's also on the screen. I think if, oh. if I'm correct. The supplements that I use, because yeah. you listen, in my in my in my point where I was, in my career was basically on me living in Thailand. So, yeah. and the funny part in Thailand was, you know, all the damn steroids were available in the pharmacy. You don't even have to ask for them. All you had to do is just walk into the pharmacy. They look at you. Oh, we got steroids here. <laughs> they pick it up. <laughs> yes, you know? serious. But, yes. But when it comes to supplements, protein powders, amino acids, any of that, not allowed in Thailand. That was considered dangerous. So I, I, I have to be, I have to tell you the honest truth. I was doing it without nutritional supplements for a long, long time. Even after I signed with Weider back in 1999, I signed with Weider where back then it was. It was a publication and a supplement deal because we had the supplements too, the A, A B, B. There was a yeah. huge supplement line. I could never get the supplements into the uh, to to Thailand, so I had all my supplements for. Because I remember after being on, on, on being with Rita for almost a year, one time he asked me because I never ordered supplements because I knew I couldn't get them into the country, so I yeah. never ordered. So he one day, man, what man, you don't like my products. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to order in order to make them feel, to make them happy, to make you yeah. know, to make it look like I'm using. I wanted to use them, but I couldn't. So I ordered them and had them sent to Milos' gym back then. So when I was preparing for a show and I came to the United States, I always had supplements there. Yeah. So, but my favorite supplements were whey isolate, which came a little bit late, but whey, pro, a good whey protein powder. I was high on amino acids. Uh, you know, back then there wasn't there were no um, no pre workouts and nothing like that. So yeah. we basically we basically lived off of protein powders and amino acids. You know, and I remember you the say turbo it, team. Would you say it made a big difference? Like, would you say okay when um, I was in Thailand, I didn't use any th any supplements, and when I did, I didn't notice a big difference, or was it all? No, uh, to be honest, for me it didn't make any difference because I, I was already there and I I made it without supplements. Yeah, true. So, so there was no more different. The only different is you can get away with traveling or being on the road, not having food when you can get a shake. Yeah. You know, if I used it, I used it as meal replacement. You know what I mean? If I, for me, the most important thing is get your meals in. If you can get six solid meals, you, you know, I, I don't care about nothing else. You know, shakes is good, you know, post-workout. But, you know, but most of the time I used them was for meal replacement when I wasn't able to get my meals in or when I didn't have any food and I had to carry uh, protein powder. So back then, you know, with the weed, I had this A, B, and B line where they had ready-to-drink shakes, uh, you know, yeah. and bottles and stuff. So I used a lot of that stuff as meal replacement. But right. I got to where I was, you know, just my food, to be honest. You know, I don't have to say, you know, it's all contributed to nutritional supplements because that wasn't available in my time. What would, what would you say back then? Because you said you were prepping in Thailand. What would you say was your favorite cheat meal? So when you were allowed oh. to cheat, what was something you were like, wow, if, 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 I, if I can cheat, that's my go-to <laughs> meal all the time, all the time. I, I was so focused. I was, I was like a machine. Uh, you could know, you know exactly. You could set the time to what time I get up, what time I walk into the gym. I open the door with the key at 4 in the morning, do my cardio. I, I, for me, cheating was most of the time was just having more carbs of the same food. Cheating for me was instead having instead of a cup of rice for each meal, have two cups of rice or three cups of rice for the, with, with a meal. And then when I really, really felt like doing something that that was not on the menu, I did, and I did that like once a week, and I always did it before I trained one day. I chose a day where I trained, and I went to Burger yeah. King. Yeah. Burger King and McDonald's were right next, literally they had a connected door. <laughs> Stupid as this sounds, it's the truth. So yeah. Burger King and McDonald's, they were right next to each other with a connecting door in the middle. So you could yeah. basically go from one, I would buy the, the, the double whopper without cheese, and then I walked through the door and I would get fries from McDonald's because I didn't like the Burger King fries. So I got yeah. McDonald's fries. And then that would be my cheat meal. I would eat it and then I would go to the gym and train. Once a week I would do that.
So good pump. And you did that with a weak muscle group or just uh, in general? No, just no, no. I would just choose a day. I would. It, it would be the same day every week. It doesn't matter. what I don't remember what muscle I was training, but it would be the same day, the same time. McDonald's or Burger King, they would know exactly what day and what, what time I would show up. Just Everything's the same. Okay. Well, we have another question. We have another question from uh, Tyrone. Uh, it says, uh, what is your favorite exercise? Favorite exercise? Wow. Now I, I, I don't have a favorite. But back then, did I have a favorite? I, I, would, I, can't, I, I couldn't pinpoint the favorite exercise. I could probably tell you what was my favorite body part to try. Let's do that. For a lot of years, it was chest. I would say chest was one of my favorite body parts to train. And it's always Mondays. So I'll always start the week off with chest. So that would get me started going into the week by doing chest on Monday. Yeah. Favorite body part? I mean, favorite exercise? If I would have to choose one by doing chest, it's incline barbell. Yeah, incline. I was very, in, barbell, incline, yeah. bench press, yes. Nice. Nice. I started doing that go, and later. Go, and I would go really, really heavy. I would go, you know, up to five, six plates. You know, with five plates, I would do six reps. With six plates, I did max of three reps, in my, the best I've ever done. So I, I was really, really strong. And that was free weights. That wasn't that wasn't machines back then. That was all free weights at the gym in Thailand. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Well, yeah. I could, we could see it back then because you were really muscular up built. Your shoulders were really in, insane. So uh, yeah, it, it, it worked out. It worked out. All the exercises yeah. worked out. Heavy lifting, heavy lifting will, 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 will show once on your physique. You can tell when somebody is, is, is training heavy when you see him take his shirt off. And I can tell you right away, you ask, okay, he's training heavy. That's dense muscle. That's not just blown up, puffy muscle. That's dense. You know yeah. what I mean? You can tell you the difference. You, you think that's the, the most difference? Because mm -hmm. someone, if someone yeah. lifts heavy, he's going to have a bit more, bit more dense muscle? Yes, you can tell. With some a long, heavy training, you can tell when the, how the muscle is shaped and how the muscle looks. You can tell. Yeah, you can tell. Okay. Well, we have another question from Dennis. It says, uh, if I'm skinny, how should I start training my body and muscles? <laughs> you train your body just like everybody else. If you're skinny, fat, it doesn't matter what, you know, yeah. what, what shape you're in. Everybody starts the same. You know what I mean? Choose the appropriate weight. Don't think you have to start training super heavy. Start light. Ease up in there and, and, and just, you know, just take it one day at a time, you know? Don't rush it. Everybody wants to be big and have big arms and wear the shirts with no sleeves, you know? But listen, yeah. it's going to take time, you know? It's going to take time. And you if you, and you need to, you need to, you know, allow be your body patient. to take the time to grow. Yeah, be yeah, patient. Yeah, it's true. Exactly. It's true because... Because also for me, it's like sometimes uh, I'm in the gym and then there's a younger guy or something like that. And he says, uh, hey, I want to get big. How do I get big? You know, and the guy's like maybe 14, 15. I'm like, whoa, when I was 14, 15, I was doing other stuff. I wasn't even thinking about the gym. So it's like a really, really big shift that you're noticing with the younger generations now. Yeah. And, I, and, and, I, yeah. I was a late starter too. Very late. I started yeah. late. I started 26. Yeah, see? That's what I mean. So, but yeah. no, most people don't want to give their body the rest or at least the, the focus or the growth that they need to make just chilling and just, just being you, just letting your body do you. They all want to, they think if they start at 13, they're all going to be shredded at 16, you know, or 18. So I think it's I maybe know, it's the media as well. It's the media as well. They're really pushing yeah, it in Kevin, their face you know, to stay. But these guys that start young, they don't have the knowledge. They don't know that what they should do. So they're basically just doing what the next guy with the big arms is doing. And they just exactly. start copying the same thing. Exactly. So they don't have the knowledge. So, you know what I mean? And, and that's why a lot of people start early, which is good. But they don't. They start wrong. You know what I mean? They do yeah. the things that they shouldn't do at the beginning. And True. at the end of the day, they're going to get bored because it's not working the way they think. They think they're going to train for two weeks and they're, ah, everything's there. Yeah. <laughs> and True. when it's not, they lose interest. You know, that's the problem. Well, then we also have a question from Jack, and he says, um, can you share any updates regarding Dennis James Classic? Okay, updates, yes. I have all the updates, you know. Unfortunately, this is not going to be a good year for the Dennis James Classic because we had to postpone all shows. I had to postpone the show here in Arizona, which would have happened two weeks ago, June 6th. Yeah. Unfortunately, the venue where the show would be held is shut down until October, and we don't even know if they open at in October, but when I asked for maybe available date, October or November, they said there was nothing available. So 
that show is postponed till June 5th, 21. And in Germany, the same problem. I mean, the German show, you know, you've been there. You know how successful the show is. And yeah, the show is good. based off the spectators, you know, we sell over 3,000 tickets. And, you know, we won't be able to have the the, the, the crowd. So, and, and the show, at this caliber, would with the bills that I have for this venue is not possible without the spectators. So it would basically have the show here. So I postponed the show too. And the Dennis James classic in Frankfurt will be October. Cancel the show. Trust me, you know how successful the show yeah. is unless I really had to. So it's the same as here that this, that the, uh, the case is going up again. They just started to close down schools again in certain parts of Germany yesterday. So it's not looking good for the end of the year. So I think I did the right thing by postponing it to next year. Yeah. Oh, so in Germany and uh, also in the States, they, they started closing schools again? So they opened it in up Germany, and now they're closing it again? they started. Yesterday, the, here in Arizona, the whole yeah. time, the whole time, we didn't really have a lot of cases. It was like, I think it was 4,000 cases met total four weeks ago when we reopened. Yeah. There was 4,000 infections, okay? Not death, no death. Yeah. And it was maybe 20 deaths. So we reopened. And since we opened in four weeks, now our cases are up to 40,000. 40,000. 40. Four zero. Wow. Wow. So, so it's now, not a wise thing to do. So it was so, too early. So yesterday, the governor's like, yeah. And, and, they, and in 20 states of the United States right now, the cases went up. And it's with all the protests probably. And there's so many things. And now the governor yesterday, for you from Arizona, gave the... Uh, the mayors from each city, the right to decide if we have to make mask mandatory, which wasn't before. So now we have to wait. I have to wait from the city where I live if the mayor is deciding on mandatory mask or not. Okay. Okay. Wow. So yeah, it's just uh, that's what I mean. Every country is trying to deal with this coronavirus on their own way. I think it, thinking maybe this is the possible best solution, but. I think I also thought maybe it was a bit too early to open up everything again. Of course, it makes sense due to the coronavirus and you want to open up the economy again and get things going. But mm -hmm. um, we just know so little about the virus and what it does exactly. So uh, and how. So I think that's that's one of the main issues. And uh, still no vaccine. So that's a bigger uh, issue. And we just got a question from Dennis. He says, uh, are there any cool stories behind your tattoos? Are there any cool stories behind my tattoo? No, no, I don't know. No, not a cool story. Or any There's, story behind your tattoos. Well, yeah, this one here was done originally by a Samoan. Yeah. This is a yeah, and he freehanded this with all the detail. This is freehand. He basically just used a sharpie, made a few lines, and then for eight hours he was doing his thing, freehanded. And that was by an original Maori guy. So that's why I'm proud of this one. This one was done here in Arizona. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, no, there's no, no, actually no cool stories. This, well, there is a cool story that didn't happen. I was supposed to, uh, for this one, Yeah. This I have the side and the chest. And yeah. I, I wanted to him to do half of my back the same way. So this side would have been, one half of my back would have been full. Yeah. So and this guy, he did it with a with a with a, well also with a pen. He basically pre-drew the whole thing yeah. and then he tapped it over. So he it took him like 45 minutes to put it all on my back. I still have the picture. I can send it to you later. And then just as he was going to start to tattoo, I was like, Ugh, I changed my mind. I don't know for whatever reason, I changed my mind and I told him let's not do it. So he basically wasted. 45 minutes of drawing all that stuff on my back and then I didn't yeah. even go to make the tattoo. So, okay. yeah, other than that, no, nah, there was no, no, no crazy stories. I changed my mind. Well, at least you changed your mind before you started. So that would have, it would have been worse if you I already know, started. I swear, <laughs> I heard the machine. I said, wait, I said, maybe I, I don't want to do it. I'm not ready. Yeah. I, I literally, it was all done on my back. I just, he just had to start tattooing. I'll send you the picture yeah. later. So, so it's well, crazy. Uh, I was wondering, like, would you say the uh, Mohoan tattoo, the one that the, the guy did freestyling, was more painful or the same experience as the one you did in the shop? Or would you say it was kind of like the same? This was maybe a little bit more painful because there's more detail. So he was on there for longer and then he has yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of black parts where, he had, where they have to... Yeah, it gets, 
It was, I, I, yeah, it's. I would say painful, but it's not kind. It's not a pain where you say you can't take it. I've never had to use any numbing cream or anything like this. Yeah. But, but what I what I did do was you no. Know, I I was I, I took a painkiller. <laughs> Yeah, you Before, did. Before, like I did, like a six hundred milligram ibuprofen. I thought it was going to help. I didn't think it helped. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, eight hours is a long time, man. And he finished. Yeah. I, I, I know there's no way that I'm going to start and I come back tomorrow and you're going to go over because you know you're sore the next day. I don't yeah. know if you have any tattoos, no, but the I next day yet. you're really, really sore and sensitive. So I said, get it done now. So when I walk out, I'm not coming back. Well, it, it was a smart idea, so now at least it's done. Unless you have to go, co co come back, and do two, three sessions. I know a guy who did like uh, four sessions to get his legs done. So, um, oh, I just got Crazy. another uh, question from John Bricks. It says, 26-year-old uh, guy here, built some muscle over the years. Uh, now to take it to the next level, lift heavier. So he wants to take it to the next level and wants to know if he has to lift heavier or what are your uh, expertise on this? It's very hard for me to tell him what to do to take it to, to the next level if I don't know what he's been doing. Exactly. I don't, I don't know what he looks like. You know what I mean? If you take it to the next level, that means you're stepping it up. Yeah. So whatever you're doing right now, just step it up. You know, if you lift heavy, just try to lift heavier. If you eat, just try to add another meal or two. Who knows? You know, depending on <clears> what you're doing. I can't tell you do eight meals if you already do eight. So, uh, you know, but in order to take it one step further, you got to take it one step further. True. I would say uh, John Briggs, contact Dennis James. He's an excellent coach. <laughs> Let him know what send you're me, doing. Yeah, have him, you know, yeah, I send him some know, pics and then he, he can really help you out because now we are just like us. It's a, it's a, it's a, the question is just too broad for to, to give a proper yeah, the uh, easiest, answer. The, to the easiest way for people to get this question answered is send me an email with your pictures current pictures and just yeah. write down what you've been doing yeah and well, then i can tell you what i would change true and i had one question as well this was just a question that i was intrigued about because we see uh, the bodybuilding community is changing for example also the champion is changing i want to know like do you also uh, are you also busy with looking at the upcoming stars so who would you say it's an upcoming star for, like, for example, bodybuilding, classic physique, men's physique. Who do you think this guy is currently underrated, but he will be one of the biggest names if he continues, if he stays consistent. Uh, he will be one of the biggest names in the sport someday. Well, hmm, I would say. In bodybuilding, somebody that's well, it's, 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 he's not young anymore, but he's new. You know, yeah. you don't have to be young to be new. But somebody that I, I think who has a bright future ahead of him, and you know, all the way up to um, maybe even, you know, competing for the title at Mr. Olympia would be Sergio yeah. Oliva Jr. Okay. Sergio Oliva Jr. has because he yeah, he made some very, he made some great uh, improvements, La Arnold Classic. I was very impressed with him at the Arnold, and I think if he gets another shot or two, and he puts it all together, I think he uh, he can solidify himself as a as a threat every year, and he's he's almost there. Then, uh, um, of course, Hadi Chopin, he's already a star, you know, and, and he came out of nowhere basically, and 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 and, and shook up the whole bodybuilding world, and I think it's not over yet. I think he's just getting started. I believe that he will be a force. He will be a people's champ. He will be a, a well-liked champion for a long time because he has that personality. Even though he can't talk, I mean, he's, I don't know if he's deaf or, or, or yeah, I think he's deaf. And, and, and so, but he's still, his personality still comes across as a very nice person. And I think that helps him a lot in the sport. And he has this whole country, Iran, backing him up doesn't matter what happens, they will have his back to the end of the world. Yeah, true. And there's nothing better than have there's nothing better than have your country back you the way they're backing him. I mean, it helps tremendously. Unbelievable. Yeah, of course. And who would you say it's for uh, example, classic physique? Classic physique. I believe that um, of course we have Brianna Ashley, we have 
Chris Bumstead, the two top the top two dogs right now. But I think Steve Lawrence, Steve Lawrence out of New York, I think, training at Beth's gym, he is the kind of guy that can come in and upset everybody and just take over classic physique because he has that tall, classic look with classic body parts, classic posing. He can be he can be a real, real star. I said this like for two years now, and I still believe he's got what it takes. Yeah. Uh, what about the ups the little bit of upset that was when uh, Chris Bumstead won from uh, Breon? Do you think it was upset? Do you agree with the judges? Uh, how how did you well, view? What was your view on the show? Well, I said it from years ago. I said Chris Bumstead is the poster child for classic physique, and I was picking him to win two years prior when Chris, when Breon beat him twice. And watching those guys go head to head, not last year, the year before, where Brian won his second, second or third, second, second Olympic. I think he won, he won two. He won two. Brian yeah, won so twice, the and then the, sec uh, Chris the second Bumstead. one. I, 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 I was going into the Olympics saying that Chris Bumstead is going to win, and then watching it from row number one, I was like, yeah. When they turn around, Brian is this is so far ahead of him still. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, but I knew that he was close. And then going into this year, I thought that I almost thought that um, they could have gave it to either one. I mean, if they gave it to Brian, it would have been perfectly fine because Brian was on. You know what I mean? So um, they gave it to Chris Bumstead, which I think was good for the sport. Yeah. Because now you see that you know uh, uh, everybody's beatable. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think there will be some guys coming up now this year. That we don't even talk about, or we don't even they don't we don't even have them on our radar. They're going to step on stage, and they will shine. You know, I think there will be a two, couple of guys that we don't even know they're going to be on that stage coming out and 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 just shaking up the whole main classic physique division, which I think is a good thing. Well, we're always excited about that, and uh, I think also your opinion about the Olympia is very. Well I would I say we really appreciate your Olympia about the, your opinion about the Olympia. Just saying it wrong. Well, and I think probably maybe a few months, maybe one or two months before the Olympia, I think it would be great to have another sit down with you, go live with you, ask you some questions. Maybe there will be more insight about who are qualified and uh, right. the competitors list as well. I think that would be a cool interview to just try start over, check it again, and so see your predictions because now we we cannot uh, view the predictions. Right. Well, I think it's now time to... I have to... a question for you. Yeah, of course. Will Gorilla will be at the Olympia this year? Uh, that's something interesting because I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think probably not this no, no, year I, because I, it's too... I, I thought so. And, and, and this is what, because, you know, this is another question I get every day. Yeah. I said, do you think the Olympia will be as successful as other Olympias? Yeah. I think the Olympia is going to be epic. Talking about the competitors. Yeah. I thought, I think that these guys putting on Dan Solomon, uh, uh, Jake Woods, I think these guys putting on the Olympia regardless is something unbelievable and it's so great for the athletes so they still have a chance to make money this year. Yeah. And it's going to be it's going to be hard to to make this the show as, as successful as all the others because it's a week before Christmas. We have uh, still probably restrictions. Yeah. I don't know about I don't know about the flight restrictions, but let's say yeah. there are a lot of people going to be like am I going to buy this Christmas gift for my mom, or am I going to go yeah. out to the, go Olympia? To the Olympia? Yeah, of course. It's going to be hard. So I'm yeah. going to expect it to be a little bit lower in in, in spectators. Yeah. But I'm going and, and the expo that they have, and I think it's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard to find sponsors right now that are able. I'm not saying willing, but able to commit and spend that kind of money, not knowing how many people can really show up. Yeah, true. It's a bit you know of a I mean? certain so situation. We saw what happened at the Arnold. So, you know, we can't have none of you know that happen again because that's why a lot of sponsors are really hesitant right now to, to, to commit to sponsor another event, especially this year with all the virus. And they're talking about it's going to spike again, October, it's going to get worse. And, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Everybody's worried right now, so we, we don't know. Regardless, I will be there. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be uh, 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 super excited to watch the show. Super excited to see who's gonna be crowned the new Mr. Olympia. And I think either way, it's gonna be an epic show. Hopefully, 
you know, everything relaxes a little bit more till then. Hopefully, we'll have Gorilla Way there because, guys, the clothes is unbelievable. Sorry. Who knows? All exactly. People always ask me. People, I get flack. I get so much shit for wearing the same clothes every day, guys. Yeah. This is my favorite stuff. That's why I yeah. wear it every day. What am I supposed to wear? It's 105 outside. You want me to yeah. wear uh, a turtleneck sweater? Yeah, true. Well, you know, we're wrapping the shirt. I'm wrapping the uh, Gorilla Wear Atlee shirt of Dennis James. Well, we have Everybody to pick knows. a winner. So uh, the winner uh, for um, the, who had the best question is going to be Mohammed Hussein. Uh, so please, Mohammed Hussein, uh, if you're reading this, make sure you uh, stay online. Also, uh, send us a uh, message on Instagram. Our Instagram is at Gorilla Wear USA. Make sure you hit us up on Instagram, and we're going to make sure and um, we get your contact so we can send it out. The signed Gorilla Wear T-shirt to you. So Dennis James is going to sign it right now, uh, so you guys can this see is, it live. Well, yeah, I'm, that's the shirt. We sign it? Should we sign it right now, or should we wait to hear the size? No, sure. Let's sign this one right now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So he's going to get this regardless. Yeah, let's just sign it right now. It's nice because it's a, it's a, it's he's a fan, and I think he would appreciate uh, getting some nice, um, high quality right, stuff. I'm going to sign this here live. Yes. I'm gonna sign it right on the on the three. There you go. Perfect. Looks great. Well, put it in. Yeah, take it, take it, see it. Can we zoom in just a little bit, guys? Yeah, perfect. So you can see the Dennis James shirt sign. And I really want to thank you, Dennis James, for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh it's my Listen, it's my pleasure. You know, I'm diehard gorilla wear when it comes down to it. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, exactly. And in a few weeks... Oh, yeah, see? So that, that's already a key sign. It's time for us to start. Well, in a few weeks, we're going to have a, a conversation with uh, Kamaru Usman. He's going to fight soon, so probably we're going to ha uh, have a chat with him as well. Is there maybe one question uh, you have uh, for Kamaru Usman? Usman is a, um, a UFC fighter. And he's going to have it to defend his title in a few weeks. So is there any special question you want to ask him? Uh, of course. First of all, I'm a huge, huge, huge UFC fan, as everyone knows. And uh, it's, it's awesome to have guys like Cody, which I was a huge fan of, and, and Kamaro and, 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 and others on the Gorilla Wear team. So my question for Kamaro, Kamaro, my question to you is, you are fighting at uh, UFC 251 in on the island in Abu Dhabi, you're fighting Gilbert Burns. Is that the fight you're looking forward to or was, were you looking forward to fighting uh, guys like Masvidal or maybe even the rematch with Kobe Covington? I'm not sure how this works, you know, because I know people, you know, they act like they want to fight, but then they, you know, they decline or not sign contracts. But what would have been your dream fight for UFC 251, if you had, if you could have picked a fighter, which one would it be for you to fight uh, on UFC, uh, UFC 251 on the island? That's my question. Perfect, man. Thank you very much for your time. We're going to save this question. We're going to ask it to Kamar Usman. And next time we're on the show, Usman is going to answer it. Dennis James, big man, you're the big guy. I really love you, brother. And I really appreciate you for having your time. So uh, you, we always know it's always too, a fun brother. time with you. So everybody, Anytime, thank you guys brother. for watching. Back to you. Exactly. And everybody, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate you guys for tuning in. And uh, till next time, when we have another exclusive Gorilla Wear live interview. Take care, guys. Thank you for your support. All right.